Hello, and welcome to the Graduation and Beyond Workshop. Today, we are going to be covering information regarding graduation and commencement, along with spending some time talking about the college to career transition. If at any point throughout the presentation you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your college advising unit. To begin, we want to take a moment and invite you to reflect on a word or phrase that comes to mind when you think of graduation. Many of you are nearing your final quarters as an undergraduate student, and we know this change can bring mixed emotions. You're focused on finishing strong in your academics and maximizing the time you have with your fellow Bruins, while also beginning to work on post-graduation plans that may include searching for employment or applying to graduate school. It is completely normal to be feeling varying emotions of happiness and excitement alongside sadness and uncertainty about what is next. While reviewing this workshop will not entirely alleviate the uncertainties that accompany graduation, we are hopeful that you will walk away feeling a bit more at ease and equipped for the transition ahead. Today, we are going to cover three main areas as they relate to graduation and commencement. The first area we will be covering is general and logistical information regarding graduation and commencement. The second area we will cover is the college to career transition. And lastly, we will share resources that may be of support as you navigate graduation and life beyond UCLA. If you scan the QR code on this page, it will take you to the graduation checklist. The graduation checklist contains action tasks that should be taken as you prepare for graduation and commencement in your final quarters. Note that this checklist is updated annually, so be sure to check our website for the most up-to-date checklist. Many of the topics we are going to discuss today are outlined on this checklist, and it also includes many relevant links. Now that you have that pulled up, we want to take a moment to clearly define the difference between graduation and commencement. Graduation is the act of completing all your degree requirements. Upon completing all your degree requirements, you graduate and receive a diploma. Commencement is the annual celebration that is held to honor graduates. Just because you take part in commencement does not mean that you have graduated. Spring quarter grades are not finalized until after the commencement ceremony, and some students also have summer or fall courses they need to complete to finish their degree requirements. So, most students taking part in commencement have not officially graduated. Now we are going to talk about logistical steps to prepare you for graduation. As a reminder, graduation is the act of completing all degree requirements. First, it is very important to verify your degree candidacy term. Your degree candidacy term is the term that you plan to graduate, meaning the term that you intend to complete all of your degree requirements. To verify your degree candidacy term, log in to My UCLA, click on the Academics tab, and then click on Degree Candidacy Term. If your degree candidacy term is already reflecting correctly, you do not need to take any additional action. Next, it is crucial to check in with your academic advisors to review your overall degree requirements and major and minor requirements. This serves as a final check to ensure that all degree requirements are being met for graduation. The third logistical step you will want to take is confirming the spelling of your name for your diploma and the college commencement program. If your name is incorrect, you will want to update your lived and legal name through My UCLA. You have the option to decide if it is your lived or legal name that you would like reflected. It is also important to review your privacy restriction settings. If you have privacy restrictions, it may impact if your name is printed into the college commencement program and may restrict UCLA from providing degree confirmation to future employers. If you have a FERPA restriction and want to remove it, please reach out to the registrar's office. Links to help you navigate these tasks can be found on the graduation checklist. Graduation season is also the time when we start to get a lot of questions regarding graduating with Latin honors. Latin honors are based on the final overall GPA of a student. At UCLA, we have cum laude, which is the top 20th percentile, magna cum laude, which is the top 10th percentile, and summa cum laude, which is the top 5 percentile of students. 
If you have questions about your Latin Honors eligibility, please reach out to your academic advising unit. Latin Honors Distinction is based on a student's final cumulative GPA. The notation will be displayed on the commencement program, your official diploma, and transcript notation. For spring and summer graduates, since your final grades will not be released before commencement, the college will use your winter GPA to verify Latin honors eligibility for commencement programs and the cords to wear with your graduation gown. Final Latin honors distinction on a student's diploma and transcript is determined after all course grades are entered into the system. The Latin Honors GPA cutoffs are decided by the university, and more information about the minimum GPA requirements can be found on the UCLA Registrar's website. Now that we have covered Latin Honors, we want to take a moment to discuss the post-completion optional practical training that is available for international students on an F-1 visa. The OPT is a type of employment authorization approved by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services for eligible F-1 students interested in engaging in employment in the U.S. directly related to their major field of study after their degree completion. For more information about OPT, please reach out to the DASHU Center. Outlined on this page are four resources for graduation support. The first resource is College Advisors. You can visit your college advising unit to speak with staff about a graduation check, graduate school advising, and to discuss the college to career transition. The next resource is Department Advisors. You can speak with your department advisors to confirm that you have completed all major or minor requirements, ensure any course substitutions are reflecting on DARS, ask about your capstone or departmental honors, and ask questions about the department commencement ceremonies and celebrations. The third resource is college commencement. Questions regarding commencement, including ticketing and ceremony information, can be answered by reaching out to UCLA com College Commencement via My UCLA Message Center. You can also visit their website and check out the FAQ page for additional guidance. The last resource outlined here is the Registrar's Office. Questions regarding your diploma, degree verification letter, ordering transcripts, and more can be answered by contacting the Registrar's Office through My UCLA Message Center or their drop-in hours. Now it's time to talk about commencement. Your dedication and hard work deserve to be honored and celebrated, and that is what commencement is, a celebration honoring UCLA graduates. As we begin talking about commencement, it is important to note that commencement is completely optional. We want you to celebrate your accomplishments in the way that feels right for you. And just because you attend commencement does not mean that you have graduated yet. Students who are eligible for commencement include the following. Students who completed all degree requirements and graduated in this academic year's fall or winter quarters. Students who have declared a degree candidacy term of spring or summer of the current academic year. The coming academic year's fall degree candidates can submit an automatically approved special inclusion petition via My UCLA if they wish to take part in this year's commencement. So, for example, in the 2023 to 2024 academic year, students who have a degree expected term of fall 2023, winter 2024, spring 2024, and summer 2024 are automatically eligible for the spring 2024 commencement. Fall 2024 graduates must submit the automatically approved special inclusion petition via My UCLA if they wish to take part in this year's commencement. Any other graduates that are not automatically eligible for commencement must submit a manual special inclusion petition to their college advising unit if they wish to take part in commencement. Additional information about this can be obtained by speaking with your college advising unit. For example, in the 2023 to 2024 academic year, this would be folks who graduated prior to fall 2023 or will graduate winter 2025 and beyond. Before we dive into more logistics regarding ticketing cap and caps and gowns, we want to take a moment to clearly outline the types of commencement ceremonies that UCLA offers. 
The first commencement ceremony that you may choose to take part in is the college commencement ceremony. This ceremony is held at Poly Pavilion, and you do not walk across the stage at this ceremony. Students can submit their preference for ceremony time when requesting tickets. The second commencement ceremony that you may choose to take part in is the department commencement ceremonies. Every department holds a ceremony, and it is during this ceremony that your individual name will be called and you can walk across the stage. Information and ticketing for department ceremonies are sent out by your department. If you have questions about your department ceremony, we invite you to reach out to your department advisor for more information. A third celebration that you may choose to take part in is the graduation-related student celebrations for specific student populations. These include events such as the Parenting Students Celebration, Latinx Graduation Celebration, Naval ROTC Celebration, and many more. To see a full list of graduation-related student celebrations, please refer to the UCLA Commencement website. To request tickets for the College Commencement Ceremony, you will need to either submit or opt out of the Senior Survey once it is available. Response to the survey will confirm your ability to order tickets. For updates regarding ticketing and additional information about ceremony times, please visit the College Commencement website. The last piece we want to touch on for commencement is cap and gown, grad photos, and invitations. Graduates can place orders at the UCLA store for caps and gowns and any special cords you may qualify for, such as Latin honors. Now we are going to discuss action steps you must take during your final quarter at UCLA. Beginning on week four of your final quarter, you may submit a diploma request via My UCLA. When you submit your diploma request, you can provide a mailing address for your diploma. Mailing is free to domestic and international addresses. If you do not want your diploma mailed, you can elect to pick up your diploma in person at the UCLA Registrar's Office. Diplomas are dated with the last day of the term but are not released until two to three months after your last term. A second action step you may want to take is updating your email and contact information on MyUCLA. The third action step is checking on your final grades for accuracy and resolving any pending petitions or incomplete grades. Once your record is processed and sealed by the registrar's office, no further changes can be made so it is important to be proactive about communicating with any relevant offices about open or pending requests. Lastly, you are going to want to make sure you settle all financial obligations with UCLA during your final quarter. Woohoo! You've done it! You've graduated! Now what? First, you are going to want to think about ordering transcripts. Transcripts are available approximately six weeks after the term is complete and can be ordered via My UCLA. In the coming months, you may need to request transcripts for yourself, graduate school, or employers. Some students may also need a degree completion letter, which acts as proof that you have completed your degree prior to receiving your diploma. To request a degree completion letter, all grades must be submitted. We also want to encourage you to begin thinking about ways to stay connected post-graduation. While we will have more in-depth information on the coming slides, one resource we want to highlight now is UCLA One. This is a career networking platform for UCLA alumni where you can find jobs and internships offered by Bruins or share a position in your own company with the UCLA community. If you are thinking about applying to graduate school, we also want to encourage you to be thoughtful about staying in touch with instructors so that if you want to reach out for a letter of recommendation in the future, you can do so comfortably. Some other resources and support we will highlight later on in this presentation include the UCLA Career Center, Handshake, and the UCLA Alumni Association. As you near the end of your undergraduate experience, you begin to enter a new phase of your life and will be embarking on the college to career transition. This is a developmental process that occurs during one of many transitional periods in your life, from college to your professional career. So what is the college to career transition? 
We define it as the emotional, social, and professional transition college students experience as they navigate the change in their identity from a student to a working professional. At this point in your life, you have carried the identity of a student with you for quite some time. And once you graduate, so much is changing. Many aspects of one's identity come into question. It's completely normal to go through this process. It's an important part of who you are as a human being, and it will contribute to your growth and development. Based on research, we've identified three key developmental areas that are essential to the college to career transition the emotional, social, and professional sense of self. The emotional piece is multi-layered and can be uncomfortable. It may often be the most challenging, largely because it is unexpected. Graduation is seen as a joyous time, which makes it uneasy for one to share that they're feeling sad or uncertain about the changes in their life and what's to come. The social element speaks to the shift in one's social structure and connections that need to be redefined and developed. And lastly, the professional sense of self, which may be impacted as one navigates professional environments, relationships, and inflated expectations regarding what they thought their first professional position will be like. Keep in mind that all three of these areas intersect with one another, and they are not linear. For some, they may experience challenges in the emotional area, versus for others, it may be the social aspect. Or, if you are me, all three areas were impacted. Adaptability is the common thread. Just as with any transition, there is an adjustment period, but we often forget that, and it's absolutely necessary to move through our journey so that we establish our new normal. When meeting with students and discussing the college to career transition, we always try to highlight this statistic. 75% of college graduates do not work in a field related to their major. This is an important thing to know and hold on to, as many will place great emphasis on the title of their major, when in reality, the transferable skills you gained and what you chose to engage in while in your undergraduate studies is what will support you in navigating your college to career transition. And transferable skills really are key. Some of the top transferable skills highlighted by employers include problem solving, teamwork, communication, leadership, and work ethic. These are skills that you obtained not only through classroom experiences, but also through co-curricular and extracurricular activities that you engaged in. If you are interested in learning more and engaging in greater discussions regarding the college to career transition, we invite you to consider enrolling in University Studies 1, ACE, the College to Career Transition. This is a one unit pass no pass seminar that is offered only during UCLA summer sessions. Students are introduced to the value of a research institution, its transferable skills, and how they can most effectively maximize time at UCLA to prepare for the college to career transition. You will hear from faculty, academic advisors, and career educators, their experiences, insights, and resources to support you as you navigate life beyond UCLA. Please scan the QR code on this slide for more information. Before highlighting some additional resources for the college to career transition, we have a few exercises that we want to invite you to take part in. If you scan the QR code on this slide, it will bring you to a guided worksheet for the exercises. The first exercise is about values. As you navigate the college to career transition, it is important to reflect on your values that may inform and support your future goals. Your values can help to inform not only the careers you are interested in, but also the work environment you hope to find and the social groups you may want to be a part of. One way to identify your values is to reflect upon moments in your life when you were the most inspired, proud, and fulfilled. Think about the values you see reflected during these moments. The second exercise we encourage you to take time and reflect on is the strengths exercise. For this exercise, we invite you to write down what you feel are some of your greatest strengths. Then, without showing them, ask someone close to you to share with you what they believe your greatest strengths are. What did you learn about yourself? What surprised you? How might these strengths inspire and guide your personal and professional aspirations? 
The third exercise we have for you focuses on building your team. We hope this exercise will guide you in exploring and identifying who you can turn to and count on as you navigate the transition into life post-UCLA. Your social relationships and the way in which you engage may shift as you transition into a new phase of your life. As you navigate these changes, it is important to identify who you can reach out to for support. Your team may include friends who provide social support, family who encourages you, a mentor whose guidance you value, or a therapist who supports you through life's challenges. While you are working on those exercises, we want to share with you some myths and realities as they relate to post-graduation life. The first myth you might hear is that you are supposed to have it all figured out. If you're still figuring things out, know that you're not alone. Take your time, explore different paths, and enjoy the process. The important thing to remember is that life is not linear, and no two paths are the same. The second myth you may hear is that no one around you is feeling sad or anxious about their postgraduate plans. You are not alone in these feelings. The reality is that most people are feeling or have experienced what you currently are as you transition into post-college life. We encourage you to think back to the team you built and find support in those people. The third myth is that your first job should be your dream job. This definitely is not true. With each professional experience, you will gain skills and learn something valuable. You will learn what you like, what you don't like, and what fulfills you. So, even if your first job is not what you dreamed of, know that it won't be your only experience and it can still contribute to your personal and professional growth. The fourth myth is that you should have a full-time job lined up before you graduate. In reality, it takes about three to six months for recent graduates to land their first job. The job market is always changing and it's normal to explore opportunities and find the right fit for you. It took me six months before I was offered a job position, and while I felt stressed at the time, looking back, I'm so grateful for the journey because it led me to a work environment where I feel valued and supported as an individual and a professional. The last slide we want to share with you all today is some resources for the college to career transition. The first resource outlined here is the Alumni Association. They have resources such as the UCLA One Networking Site, the Alumni Mentoring Program, Bruin Career Insights, Career Coaches Network, and the Bruin Success Podcast. You all are joining a legacy of Bruins, and so we really encourage you to take advantage of the resources that are offered through the Alumni Network. You never know who you might meet or be connected to that could open doors as you start your career. The next resource we must share with you is the Career Center. I cannot emphasize enough how strongly I encourage each of you to visit the Career Center before graduation. They have so many wonderful resources, including resume editing, cover letter workshops, career counseling, career fairs, job and internship listings that are exclusive to UCLA students posted through Handshake, and so much more. Something important to know about this resource is that it is available for you for three months after you graduate. While this gives you a little bit of flexibility to use their services after you graduate, three months passes quickly, so don't wait to contact them. For those of you who might be thinking you want to visit the Career Center, but you aren't applying to a specific job yet, or you aren't exactly sure what you want to do post-graduation, go visit them. Figuring out ideas of what to do post-graduation is part of what they advise on. And even if you don't have a specific job you're applying to right now, it never hurts to create a resume and have them edit it so that when you do find a job you're interested in, you are prepared and have a resume ready to go. Lastly, UCLA has the Financial Wellness Program. This program helps graduating seniors understand their options for repaying student loans, as well as understanding general financial literacy concepts. These sessions, including the individualized financial coaching sessions, are cost-free for all enrolled Bruins, and I highly recommend taking advantage of this during your final quarter here. This may be one of the few times in your adult life that you are offered an individualized financial coaching session completely free of charge. Even if you don't have student loans or you don't need their assistance with that, they can also talk with you about the basics of investing, how to build credit, and other savings goals. Make your money work for you as you enter a new phase of your life.
Congratulations. You have worked so hard to get to graduation and commencement, and we hope that you find ways to celebrate yourself in the coming days, weeks, and months. Please do not hesitate to reach out to your college advising unit if you have any questions about what was shared here. And once again, congratulations, Bruins.